Elon Musk recently made some, some comments on the world stage dealing with ChatGPT, AI, and education. So I wanted to give you my sort of commentary reactions to them. <laughs> Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you, Elon. It's been uh, almost six years. I ask you about the state of technology. If you can elaborate a bit and brief us, how do you see technology in the next 10 years from now? It's, it's always difficult to predict technology with precision. Um, especially over a 10 year time frame when it is changing so much. And on a more a sort of near term time frame, I think artificial intelligence is something we need to be quite concerned about and really be uh, attentive to the safety of, of AI. Um, you mentioned uh, ChatGPT earlier. You know, I, I played a significant role in the creation of uh, OpenAI. Essentially, at the time, I was concerned that Google uh, was not uh, paying enough attention to AI safety. And so, and so I, I, with a number of other people, created OpenAI. And although initially it was created as an open source nonprofit, and now it is closed source and for profit, I, I don't have any stake in OpenAI anymore, nor, nor am I on the board, nor do I control it in any way. But the, the ChatGPT, I think, has illustrated to uh, people just how advanced AI has become. Um, the, the, because the AI has been advanced for a while, it just didn't have a user interface that was um, accessible to most people. Um, so what really ChatGPT has done is just put an, an accessible user interface on AI technology that is um, that has been present for a few years, and there are much more advanced versions for that that are coming out. Um, so I think we, you know, I think we, we need to really be. I think we need to regulate AI safety. Frank, frankly, um, because if you think of any um, technology which is potentially a risk to uh, civil to, to people, like if it's aircraft or you know cars or medicine, we have regulatory bodies that um, oversee the public safety of, of cars and planes and medicine, and um, I think we we should probably we should have a a similar sort of regulatory oversight for artificial intelligence because it is, I think, actually a bigger risk to society than cars or planes or, or medicine. So, um, and this may slow, slow down AI a little bit, but I think that, that might also be a good thing. The, the, the challenge here is that government regulatory uh, authorities tend to be set up in reaction to something bad that happened. If you look at, say, aircraft or, or cars, um, you know, the cars were unregulated in the beginning, aircraft were unregulated. Uh, but they had lots of, um, you know, airplane crashes, and in some cases, manufacturers that were cutting corners, um, and and a lot of people were dying. So they, the public was not happy about that, and so they established a regulatory authority to improve safety. And now commercial airliners are um, extremely safe. My concern is that with AI, if if there's something bad, that if something goes wrong, um, the reaction might be too slow from a regulatory standpoint. So. I, I, I'd say, like, it, 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 you know, if I say, like, what, what are the biggest risks to the future of civilization? That it, it, it's a, a, AI, but AI is a double, you know, it's, it's, it's both positive and negative. It has great, great promise, great capability, but it also with that comes great danger. I mean, you look at, say, nuclear, it, it, you know, just discovery of sort of nuclear physics, uh, you had nuclear power generation, but also nuclear bombs. So, anyway, I think we should be quite concerned about it, and we should uh, have some regulation of what is it, if that fundamentally um, a risk to the public. Uh, you know. I think Elon makes a lot of really good points here dealing with AI policies and regulations in order to ensure safety. That kind of leads us into dealing with AI as far as education and policies and regulation are concerned. So it is important for academic institutions to have some sort of policy, have some sort of regulations to at least address aspects of advanced AI, when it's allowed, when it's not allowed, at the very least so that students have a, a firm understanding so that they know uh, what's okay, what's not okay. And again, to empower that instructor to be able to decide when are we using AI, when are we not using AI. So that's something to keep in mind. Additionally, going beyond that, since there isn't that much uh, regulation dealing with AI, it makes it that much more important for us in academia to prepare our students to give them this ability to be able to use AI properly. So this is AI literacy. They really need to understand how to use these different systems as well as having this ability to have critical thinking 
so that they can understand, well, where's my data going? Where's the data sources that this AI is using in order to give me this feedback? And are there any biases there? I need to be able to critically think and know that I need to check and verify these type of things. Very clear. Uh, let me move to another subject, uh, Elon. Education. I mean, you have your own philosophy about education. With AI, education might change dramatically. Can you tell us briefly about your philosophy of education? And number two, do we need 12 years of schooling and four years of university? With respect to education, I think in, in general, uh, th some things that we could do to make it more compelling would be to explain to children why we are teaching a particular subject. So uh, the human mind has evolved to really forget anything that it deems um, un unimportant. So um, in, in fact, human memory is really quite quite bad um, relative to say, the memory of your phone. Your phone is, can remember the entire contents of an encyclopedia down to the last uh, letter and pixel. Um, but human memory is, is terrible by comparison. So the mind is constantly trying to forget things, actually. Um, so if you, but if you explain the, the why, why a subject is being taught, um, that will then establish relevance and it's much more likely to result in motivation for kids. Um, and, and then also if you, if you teach uh, knowledge, especially in the sciences, as solutions to a problem, um, it's much more effective. So uh, like let's say you're trying to un understand an internal combustion engine. Well, it's actually better to, to sort of take that apart and, and then say, okay, well, what tools do we need to, to use to take it apart? We need a wrench and screwdriver and various other things uh, to take it apart. Well, then, then, then you understand that the reason for the, the tools. And so, like for, for mathematics, and, and it's are like tools in, in, in physics and engineering. Um, but if you, if you, but if, you, if you teach to the problem and, and say, and then you understand, then you establish the relevance of the tools, then you, it's actually much easier to remember um, mathematics and physics uh, because they help explain how the world works um, as opposed to teaching them without explaining why um, and simply teaching them it's like instead of having teaching to the problem teaching currently people teach the tool it would be like having a course on on screwdrivers or a course on wrenches um, but not understanding why you have a course you're learning about screwdrivers and wrenches I think this is really quite a fundamental principle that should be applied in education and and I think sometimes we do we do teach classes that are that children do not find useful and and where the answer to the why is actually not going to be a very good answer um, you know, like, like, um, most people I think will do not find advanced mathematics useful and are unlikely to find it useful in their life um, or the elements that they do find useful could be taught very quickly as general principles. I also think that uh, critical thinking is something that should be taught to children at a, at a relatively young age, um, as, as effect, effectively like a mental firewall, to really think about um, when somebody tells you something, is it cogent, is it true, or what is the probability that it is true? Um, and so that you can t be taught to reject things that are untrue or more likely to be untrue um, and favor things that are more likely to be true. Um, critical thinking, I think, is very helpful for, for, for people to learn. So is it 12 years of schooling you are with or without 12 years? 12 years is a long time, I suppose. Um, but I, I mean, humans just do take a long time to mature. So there's emotional maturity, physical maturity, and mental maturity that is happening simultaneously with the education. I, mean, I suppose it could be done in 10 years. Perhaps it does not need 12. But, but, but then is someone mature at age 16? They're more likely to be mature at age 18. So I guess 12 years is probably not bad. Um, we probably don't need an additional four or five or six years in, in um, college or university. That seems probably excessive. Yeah, I think we would probably shave a few years off and be fine. Right. Okay. <laughs> Some more really good comments dealing with education in general. Relevancy, that relevancy aspect is so important because that's a primary factor in motivation in general. Being able as an instructor to answer, why are we learning this? That's a key thing that students always want to know, whether they're young students or adult learners. Why are we learning this? That has to be something that really gets pushed. The relevancy really needs to be pushed and understood more so now than ever.
right? One of the big factors as far as why are we relevant as, uh, as instructors is because we can definitely do that. We can help the students know why is it personally relevant to them. And along with that, understanding the why questions, uh, critically thinking about, well, why are we doing this specifically? Why don't we just have an AI do this? So helping them to critically understand, well, you have to develop skills mastery here so that you can actually work better with the AI later on so that you can enhance your ability to prompt the AI, enhance your ability to work with, with the AI in order to accomplish more and better things. And additionally, understanding that learning is for life.